Back to Flyer Mountain. Um, I've been there for 14 years. Uh, I served five years in high school. And I feel like I'm a volunteer there. Well, part time, maybe. That word, yeah. This is uh, Gus Trujillo, Stout Trujillo. Been in Flyer Mountain six years. Before that, water traffic to government services contract. Uh, pretty much so we're, this, this is a class that we tailored um, to give to, to, to career firefighter departments. Um, this is the first time we've done a recruit, recruit class. So there's a lot of things in here that um, aren't necessarily going to apply. And when I start talking about complacency, I hope that you guys all don't understand how you can be complacent. I hope that it's something that you're like, oh my god, how could you not want to wear your bunker gear? Um, but something that you need to understand is, is that woven in the fabric of our uniforms, it, there is this, this cancer of complacency that, that starts to set in throughout your entire career, you're going to fight it. Um, it's infectious. There, there's guys in the station right now that are just waiting to pass it on to you, and the longer you go without getting hurt, um, the easier it's going to be for you to start to get comfortable settling in with, hey man, I'm Superman, this, this ain't going to hurt me. Things, I, I've been doing this for years, I ain't never been hurt, stuck with a needle. I ain't never stepped out and traveled got hit by a car. Um, that's the time when it's going to hit you. <clears throat> this entire incident is my fault because, man, after what, almost 18 years, I ain't never got hurt. You know, I'm a badass. He ain't going to get me. Look at his mustache. You just keep <laughs> going with a mustache like this. I ain't going to ask. Great. <laughs> <clears throat> so so I'm, I'm not here to scare you um, or, or, you know, to, to stand up here and spout a bunch of doom and gloom. Um, but the information I give you ought to make you wet your pants just a little bit. Um, because this is a dangerous job. I think there's a sticker in your helmet. It wasn't mine when I first started. It says firefighters inherently dangerous. And um, that ain't the low crap. It is. There, there's things out there. There's, there's structural components right now in your town that are just waiting for you to walk underneath them. So that'll hit you in the head and kill you. So we're going to talk about the structure fire we went to back in 2011. Um, it's the last structure fire of any substance that I've been to since. Um, we don't fight fire fire around. It's against um, it's against town ordinance. <laughs> to, uh, to have fires in your home. So our citizens are really good at compliance. So I'm not sure how you guys are interested. Um, we got a lot of brand new buildings and, and um, things just don't burn. So we don't have a lot of opportunities to, to fight fire. And whenever we do fight fire, things usually happen that, that aren't so bad, or aren't so good. And in this case, we, uh, we took all the things that we were doing wrong and put them in one room. And things fell apart. So we'll talk about the fire, we'll talk about the decisions that I made, um, and then the result of those, of those decisions and, and how it almost killed us. And the second part of the class, I'll talk about um, the lessons that I learned. I, I actually went out and looked for, for answers to, to why things happened the way they did. Um, so it will happen again to me. So I hope that that, that part of the class is information you guys can use throughout your career to keep us safe. So we'll start off with. Um, Kind of the, the initial layout of, of the uh, of the fire and, and kind of our tactical strategies at, at the point when the call came in. It came in about nine o'clock at night. I think it was like nine fifteen or nine thirty when the call dropped. Uh, it was in June. It was like ninety degrees outside. The wind was blowing thirty miles an hour out the south, um, gusting to forty. So real hot, real dry, real windy. I remember driving to work that morning. Um, thinking, hey, we got a fire today, it's going to suck. Absolutely going to suck. And we were both at a station um, that still to, to this day is, is the vacation station. We, we might run one call a shift. Yeah, or not. And I, I, mean, I was playing video games with some friends online. And I was like telling them, yeah, I'm fixing to settle in, play some games all night. <laughs> Ain't run no calls today, baby. And, uh, and I didn't come back to, to the game. Like, Hell yeah. We got stuff to do. We got things to shoot. Um, I couldn't really make. I couldn't. I couldn't make that arrow rotate the right direction because it's Microsoft Paint. Cheap. That's all I can afford. So it was actually coming right here, out of this direction right here. Now right here under this um, professionally rendered fireball is a, a three-car garage. Um, engine three it was in District Three, so Engine Three and Meg Three were the first units on scene. Meg Three pulls out the station and said, "Hey, we got a header from the station." And we know we got something working. So Engine Three gets on first. Meg Three's over here doing whatever medic stuff. Uh, truck pulls up behind Engine Three. Engine Three was good enough to save the address for the truck. You guys got a truck company, Richardson? Quint. Quint, okay. 
<clears throat> we had just got this truck. Um, it, it's a year old at this point. We never had a truck company before. And so they, they bought us a truck, um, and it was installed with the, uh, there's these little injectors in the seats. When you sit down, it, it injects testosterone um, into your muscles. <laughs> so you're automatically trucking. So they get all bent out of shape. You don't save the address for them because they got to do truck stuff. So Inclure is good enough to let that happen. <laughs> uh, we pulled up in engine five, and we're supposed to be on a quint, but, but our quint's broken. We got, we got it was always broken, so we're in the reserve engine. And you'll hear on the radio traffic the, the commander's talking. He's calling point five and engine five, point five and engine five. It's he used to call me the Quint, but we're, we're in the reserve. <clears throat> engine one pulls up behind us. The battalion chief's across the street um, doing command stuff. He's got markers out and, and radios, and he's doing commander stuff. And this was this is what we had on scene at the initial assignment. Now we were supposed to have a bunch of uh, mutual aid companies. Our, our, our second long assignment was supposed to have more engines to the scene. Our dispatchers sent them all to fill in. They got ready and said, hey, we're supposed to fill in or come to the scene. Oh, why don't you just go fill in? So we were really short staffed right at the beginning of this, of this fire. And that started somewhere in the garage. We don't know where. Uh, we still don't know where. The, the homeowners had come back after the fact and, and said, oh my god, what's that smell? And they said, oh, it's burning insulation. Oh, that's what we smelled this morning, that same smell. So we think it was somewhere in the walls of the garage. Um, there was a, a Land Rover or something, or a Lexus or a BMW in the garage that had burned up. That contributed to it. The guy had a you know, garage to paint, propane, whatever. This little red square is the window that we eventually bailed out of. We'll be on the Charlie side. There's the pool. So this was the setup. Um, this next video coming up, um, I hope the videos work. They have this PowerPoint thing has is, is not been playing videos to walk to go to plan B if it doesn't work. But this video is, is what I would have seen through my windshield of my engine. Now, after the fact, I sent an email to the HOA president said, hey, we had a fire, we had two guys hurt, we're doing a, some training on it. Can you send an email out to your residents and ask them if they have any videos? Because there were 200 people on scene. Every one of them had a phone up. Um, so he sends an email out, hey, anybody got any pictures? And whoosh, they were flooding in like crazy. So we got all kinds of videos and pictures and stories for residents saying, hey, I, I, saw, I saw you guys doing this, I saw you coming out the window. So all the videos that we have are from the residents. So if you guys get in a similar situation where you need some pictures, um, HOA residents are, are a good resource to start with. There's my agent. You'll actually see us here in a second walking. Right past the garage there. That's me and Gus walking up. Because I came out of the middle, and everyone was like, 
Damn, dude, how much room do you need? I'm like, I'm telling you, there was more stuff there. Okay? I promise you there were things on the way. There, it, it was this width right here. So this next video is shot from this side of the house. But the kid who filmed that first video walked around through the houses to the street behind this house and was filming in between the houses. Um, he, he was shooting at this part of the house right here. Inside somewhere. I think we're, we're getting pretty close to the point where we're fixing to be jumping out of the windows. I wish I had this lady's footage right here because I'm pretty sure she caught us coming out. So, so at this point in the fire, we all still, everybody who's on scene, was still under the impression that the fire was still contained in the garage. Um, we didn't think that it extended into the house. We had, um, well, truck one, truck four was on the first floor doing a search and looking for a dog. Um, they had light smoke on the first floor. Nobody was really concerned that, that the fire had extended past where we had this line set up. Now, this is a two and a half. Um, Captain Cato took a two and a half through the front door and set up in between the, the door that leads into the garage from the house. He's sitting there at that door and he's fighting fire. And, and, and as far as he can tell, he's doing a good job because it's blacked out where he's at. And the previous two fires that we had were identical to this. We had a fire in the garage, the first crews go through the front door, set up a block, they fight fire, somebody else shows up with hand lines, they, they knock it down, we mop it up with, with, with hand tools and pipe tools and such, and everybody goes home. So that's what we're all thinking. Um, even the incident command like, yeah, we've got this thing knocked out. We're fixing, to, we're fixing to be done with this. So his plan was to get the ladder up, um, hit it with the master stream one time, try to black it out, we'll mop it up with the hand lines, and everybody's going to be done. So, so our assignment was, when we get up to the command post, was um, once we go do the search on the second floor. Now, when I get it on scene, look through the window, I'm thinking, all right, we're going to fire in the garage. I see a two and a half coming off. I know, I know what's fixing to happen. I told Gus, hey, man. Grab some pipe poles. We're going to go up there and we're going to fight fire. We get to the command post. He says, go to the second floor and do a search. What do you mean to do a search? Where's the truck? The, the truck's who searches. He says, they're on the first floor looking for a dog. You know, I, I've got a high suspicion somebody's inside. Well, first crew's on scene here is cell phone ringing inside. It's the iPhone, AT&T iPhone default ringtone. And um, you don't go anymore without a cell phone anymore. If you've got a cell phone ringing in the house, you've got a person next to it. Well, she had forgot at home. Um, there were several neighbors that had, had come up to a fire and said, hey, they're at dinner, it's their birthday, they're not home. Well, that information never made it to the command post. So it's late at night, there's cars in the garage, there's phones ringing inside, the house is occupied, so free went otherwise. But he sends up, sends us up to the second floor to do the search. And this is where my complacency started. Um, because I get on the scene, this fire's already put out in my head. I'm, I'm, already, I'm already rolling post, as far as I'm concerned. So I get to the command post thinking I'm going to do one job, and I only brought the tools that I thought I needed for that one job. Well, I get assigned to go do something else. I'm like, crap. All right, fine. I can search. I've been doing this for a long time. I look down at my engine. It's way the hell down the street. I'm like, God, I ain't walking back there to get tools. I look at engine three. I'm like, I ain't taking their tools. This station three guys, they're going to bitch about me taking their tools. So I'm like, you know what? Let's just run upstairs and do a quick search. We'll come back downstairs. And we'll fight fire, which is what I want to do. I want to spray water at fire. That's what my job is. I'm, 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 I'm a, an engine guy or a clip guy, whatever. I spray water at fire. That's what I do. Now, this, this picture right here shows um, where we were all incorrect. This is looking at the Bravo side of the structure, the left side. Um, this, these studs right here are the studs to the wall of the room that we are in. The garage is over here. The fire had gotten into a void space in here. 
and work its way to this little section of the attic and will sit here behind this roof section for wait, wait for a chance to come out and play. Now, this part of the roof hadn't burned through yet. And the way the house was set up, it was, it was cut up kind of weird because they had a they had a dance studio on the first floor, like a ballet or something. Uh, one of their daughters was taking a ballet, so like, hey, let's just build a dance studio. So the attic was all weird, cut up. There's a lot of void spaces that, that we didn't anticipate. And um, it, is, it was sitting there waiting for us when we got when we got in that room. Now, after the fact, I went through and did a walkthrough. Um, I held up my video camera and then retraced my steps of, of the path that we took inside the, uh, inside of the house. So he tells us to go to the second floor and do a search. All right, we're going to do a search. We'll go upstairs, smoke on the first floor. I'm like, yeah, I understand that because there's a tire in the garage and the wind blowing this direction. We're going to be smoking the house. We get to the second floor and it's floor to ceiling. Dark, dark brown, can't see a thing. Um, I get to the top of the stairs and I'm like, dude, this ain't right. Where are those smoke coming from? Because the house isn't on fire. The house is not on fire. I know that because the house is not on fire. You know, it's still stuck on my head that this fire is still in the garage. I get this real weird feeling. Like, Ugh, that's somebody right? I don't, I don't, I don't feel, I don't feel right in this situation. And I started walking back downstairs. And I had to stop myself and do, say, get your ass back upstairs and do your job. You know, I dismissed that feeling of fear or anxiety. You know, that I was newly promoted captain. This is the first big fire I've been into. I can't see anything. Uh, I'm in a stranger's house. That there, there, there's things that are going on that I, I don't quite understand, so I'm afraid. So I make a decision, so I guess that we're going to let him search. So off we go. And, and we start we start, uh, we start working our way through this house. At this point, what we have on scene is what was in that picture. We've got engine three on a two and a half. We've got a truck on the first floor doing truck stuff. And we're on the second floor. Uh, Medic three has got an exposure line going. They're also kind of rigged. Exposure, rip, exposure kind of thing. <clears throat> so still real limited resources. <coughs> Alright, so here's the uh, top of the landing for computer. I actually turned that light switch on because it was dark and I just had a <laughs> I was like, what the hell am I doing? Alright, so we can do a left hand search, we're both on our feet walking. We come into this bedroom, I find a, I find a mattress, I'm like, dude, we're fixing to be on the news, we're fixing to find somebody in this bed and be heroes. So we sleep the bed, ain't nobody there. Um, we look on both sides of the bed, nobody's there. Fine, I guess we'll be heroes at a different fire. <laughs> come into the next room, remember, we got two pipe poles, I got a um, we're I'm sound on the floor, I'm kind of punching holes in the ceiling, looking for, uh, looking for a fire above me, I can hit tile. And, and send Gus in the bathroom to do a quick search. He comes back out. Um, working our way around, left hand search, get to the third room. And I look down at the wall on the floor. I see this, this air return vent. And it, it is a perfect triangle of red um, of fire right behind that vent. I'm like, oh my God. We, uh, we got fire on the walls. And I turn around and tell Gus, say, hey man, we got fire on the walls. Um, let's get out of here. I'm like, oh, that's where all the smoke's coming from. It's blowing through the super vent. And as soon as I said I got fire on the walls, uh, Gus being the good engine guy that he is, um, you hear fire on the walls, you open the wall up, and, and you get to work on it. He takes his pipe pole and throws it through the wall. Knee jerk reaction. And the whole room filled full of fire. There, there were flames that shot from one side of the room to the other in, in a matter of, of less than a second. It was like a perfect cylinder of flames working across this room. And holy crap, we were going to be in so much trouble. We just burned this house down. That's my first reaction. I'm like, dude, we got to get out of here. So we spin around to leave. Um, let me touch on that. That has complacency at the same time. Like, you know, we're in there doing a search, and we're in the dark doing a search. And all of a sudden he tells me, we've got fire in the walls. I've been to fires before where we had a hose and we're not opening walls. We can't find the fire. So knee jerk reaction, here I go, I'm not thinking we don't have a hose. I'm always used to having a hose. You know, and that that little mistake being complacent, you know, and just you know, he was afraid, I was afraid too, you know, 
and I want it light. I know if I found some fire, I'd have some glow. And you know, when that fire came in, I kind of, you know, came too, but I wasn't thinking at the same time. So, you yeah. even said that you were slapping at it with a pipe hole trying to get into it. No! I don't have a hose. I'm looking just, am I going to beat it with this stick? <laughs> yeah. And then that, that fire's just getting bigger and bigger. And, you know, that's, that's when, you know, the stuff he's going to talk about later kicks in too. So yeah, we had we we had we had fire board. Um, and, and we turned around to leave. Now remind you, here's the stairs we came in, there's the first bedroom, there's that bathroom, here's that room, there's like glowing uh, rectangle of doom right there. And then this, this is the garage right here, that's the direction of the wind. So we punch a hole right here. Oh my god, all those fire that was hanging out in the garage. I'm tired of being in the garage, I don't want to see what's going on inside. Here it comes. So we're standing right here. Okay. Hey guys, we got fire on the walls. Hey Cap, you will be able to do it's not really boom, too bad, there comes the fire. <laughs> so all we had to do was this right here. And that's what I was doing in my head. I'm walking, looking for the banister of the uh, of the staircase. I'm like, God damn, I don't want to fall on the stairs and break an ankle. I'm never gonna do that. So I'm walking with my hands out in front of me, looking for the uh looking for the stairs, and and I come back around and I'm looking at that same hole that we just opened up. And now the damn thing's bigger. That sheet rock was just crumbling away. Holy crap. I think I'm here. I'm obviously not. I'm either looking at this same hole or I'm in a different part of the house and the whole house is on fire. I have no idea where I am. Mayday, mayday, mayday. Now I didn't call Mayday because I'm some, some awesome fireman that, you know, I'm some, some trained specialist. Um, we had just spent two straight years doing mayday training at my station. My captain went to the uh, National Fire Academy, and there's this room in there that has all these CDs and, and publications, and they're free. And so every time we go to the National Fire Academy, we're like, <laughs> we fill our bags up with all the stuff. We come out of here, we're like, oh my god, look at all the stuff that I got. I got a wristband, I got a pamphlet, I got a, I got a book. So he gets back to the station, and he's like, look at all my stuff. I'm like, oh my god, you got so much stuff this time. That double what I got last time. So he's going through all the stuff. He's like, oh, cool, Mayday CD, let's watch this. He throws it on the computer, we're watching it, and um, like, oh my god, we're listening to a guy die right now. This dude is dying. That's the last, the last thing anybody's ever going to hear about that guy. He died right there. That sucks. Let's do Mayday training. And we, just, we, just, we just did RIP training where, where we, all, we all went to a warehouse and called from the stand. Oh my god, um, call the RIP team in. We, it took nine crews to move a dummy 20 feet, and we killed nine crews in a row. So, Damn, man, let's, let's do Mayday training. You know, we're kind, of, we're kind of good at dragging somebody out of a building, but let's, let's do the thing that starts that. So we're like, all right, do we have an SOG on it? No, all right, made an SOG, <laughs> proofread that. Cool, send it to the department, boom, everybody in the department's got it. Let's, let's go to a DFW and train at their medic simulator. So our crew was a DFW. And we crawl around a little medic deal, and the crawl, little thing falls out from underneath you. <clears throat> you, do the, you throw a chain link fence over you. <clears throat> Have an emphysema up here. Um, and so we got good on our crew and, and doing many stuff. Oh, we'll train the rest of the ship. All right, so all the other stations, let's go to, let's go to DFW. So we all go to DFW. Let's get the rest of the departments, the whole department. We get the whole department through, all these rookies that we just hired. Everybody's had med day training. That's all we did for two years. And every ship would be in there looking on YouTube for med day. So, oh, look at this guy dying. Oh, that sucks. Look at this guy from Houston dying. Oh, that sucks. So it was on the front of my mind. And when I got into a parameter, and we have parameters like Navy pilots. Um, if, if, they're, if they're out of control of an airplane at 10,000 feet, they eject. If they lose hydraulic pressure while flight, they eject. So we said, all right, our parameters, if you're lost, mayday. If the roof collapses, mayday. If you're missing one of your firefighters, mayday. If you fall through a floor, mayday. Well, I was in a mayday parameter, I recognized that. And just out of habit, bam, mayday, mayday, mayday. I'm calling for help. This next video is from the same vantage point of, of the, the last one we saw looking at the back of the house, the Charles side of the house, but it's from an iPhone that's about 100 feet back from the last one we saw. So it's very hard to see what's going on. You'll see some, um, some flashes of light. So I'll try to point out right about there. That's, the, uh, that's our flashlights on our coat. This is the, 
the ladder truck, the light on the ladder truck. This is the fire from the garage. And right in here in this area, this little red thing, little solar flare, whatever it is, it's going to kind of hover around the, uh, the window. And you'll see, you'll see the silhouette of those windows here in a little bit as the uh, room fills up the flames. And, and, and right when that wall opened up, I realized I'm lost, mayday, mayday, mayday. Right before I called mayday, dispatch just on the radio was like, hey, it's time for a car. I'm like, holy crap, if I don't beat that car check out, it'll be an hour and a half before I have time to go to the radio. Because our car checks take forever. Because nobody's paying attention, nobody wants to answer the car check. It take, takes a long time to get that through. So I barely, barely beat that car check out. Amen. Okay, he's gonna get me out of this. You know, I'll just follow him. 
you know, and all of a sudden, you know, he's calling the maiden. And I'm like, what, what's going on? I'm like, oh, shit, shit, or it just hit the fan, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, we're in trouble. <laughs> so, so he assumes that I know what I'm doing. I got news. I'm useless at this point because all of this, all these things that have happened, there is so much fire in this room at this point. It is so damn hot. Um, you ever notice when you do a lot, you, you have to do a lot of fire stuff here? You know, it's after about a couple hours, you air tank the air, and you think it's, it's kind of warm. Instantly, it was so hot that I could barely breathe. And I never had that before. I've been a lot of, I've been a lot of, a lot of fires, a lot of training. It ain't never got to where I couldn't breathe the damn air. I was questioning whether I was even hooked up anymore at that point. Um, I couldn't see anything. I could damn sure feel things. I could feel my skin start to, to bubble in some places. I mean, I've had the little thing where you get the little bee stings on your butt cheeks and, 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 and your back. And, Oh, it's getting toasty in here. Way past that, you know. I, I'm, I'm way beyond my uh, my comfort level of, of being burned to death. You know, at this point, I'm, I'm not happy. So I called the mayday. Command was like, oh, "What? Uh, can you repeat the mayday? Are you serious? Why are you calling mayday in a house that's not on fire? Fire's in the garage. We got we got that under control." Okay, and he was outside in front of his command post, and, and, and we, had a, we had a cert team. And the, the cert team guy was standing there chewing his ass because there wasn't any, wa wasn't any ice in the water cooler on the rehab truck. Okay, <laughs> by God, I'm a radio shackle boy. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, and he, the inside commander's like, dude, you smell like ketchup. Go away from me, stop. You're weirding me out. Okay, he's getting far away from the command post, and here's Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. What? Are you serious, Mayday? And you can kind of hear in his voice. Um, it takes him a little bit for him to ramp up to, to speed because he doesn't believe what he's hearing. Everybody on fire ground doesn't believe what they're hearing. Oh my God, are you serious? Um, and all, after the fact, all the guys that were outside, you know, they said they felt so helpless when they heard that. They said that time stood still um, for them. And they were like, a couple of guys like, man, all, all I could think was, I wish I could trade places with you guys. I'm like, why do you say that? Thinking the same damn thing. <laughs> <laughs> I wish Station 3 was in here. This is their damn mystery. <laughs> now, time for me, when I let go of the mic after my first Mayday transmission, it was Mayday, Mayday. Damn, that Parkland is filthy. How fast it took for me. <clears throat> and Gus, he was kind of back and forth. Yeah, I, I came in and out. Like, you know, like when before I poked that hole in there, I was like, you know, in that. Sympathetic system, you know, and then you had it. And I don't know, it's just, it's hard to explain. It's just like have, have somebody pause the remote like, all the time, you know, and then you come to and you're out, you know, s stuff's going on so fast, and it's just, it's just, it's just hard to explain, really. You know? I, think it was, I think it was two minutes. From the time we called Mayday to the time he said we're coming off here, it was two minutes. Um, and it just, there is, there is no time with that. There is no perception of time. Um, for anybody on the scene. And that's why it's so important. I've seen a lot of people say, um, hey, if you ever get into trouble, man, just, just, just wait 10 seconds, you know, and, and, and calm down. You ain't got time to be counting 10 seconds. And even if you could count 10 seconds, is your 10 seconds going to be one second or an hour and a half? So anyway, <clears throat> call the Mayday. Now, we, we train to do to Luna, which, which I hate because Somebody has taken these five steps, and I apologize about fixing the bus on your train or not. <laughs> we, someone's taken these five factors, all right, we need to know your location, your name, what your assignment was, um, you know, where you're at. They've taken these five things. All right, these are the important things that we want to hear from you when you call my name. And they're like, well, we've got to make it fit a word. All right, that's working around. <laughs> hey, the bar works. Well, that ain't necessarily the right order you need to give this information in, but hey, it makes a word. It's got to work. I hate acronyms in the fire service. Sample, PQRS, T E A E L U tips. You know, all those stupid things that, that make words that don't make any sense. Yeah. Have you guys met it? Mm -hmm. EMT? Sample. Oh, what are your signs and symptoms, man? Oh, what are your allergies? Why don't you get the allergies later? Why don't you figure out what's wrong with it first? It doesn't make sense. All right, sorry. I'm almost so <laughs> <close about that. clears throat> So, I, I trained to call Lunar. That's what came out of my mouth. Um, I gave second floor, left hand search, we got fire going through the walls, we're lost. I didn't give my name, my unit, um, basically because I knew that he knew was calling. I was the only guy inside at that point. 
Um, it, it, just, it just didn't come out. So I didn't get the full luminar, but I got a lot. Um, he asked me to repeat it. Second floor left-hand search for lost. I let go of the radio at that point. I've got one of those little leather strappy things um, because it makes me look like I work for FDNY. That's <laughs> why I initially got it. Well, when I, when I grabbed the rock and mic and let go of it, I had ripped it off the strap, and it ankle mic at that point. I was done talking on the radio. And I had one guy after going past me. I said, all you gotta do is if you lose your mic, is you lean over and you swing your arm in a circle like this, you're like, dude, I didn't have time. There were no calisthenics. <laughs> right? There, there was no arm swing. If I had time to do this, I wouldn't have time to find a door. So he kept calling for me, calling for me, hey, you know, where are you at, whatever. I ain't, I ain't got time to talk to you at this point, chief. I'm busy. So Gus hears the mayday. He goes into, oh my god mode. This is a this is a real deal. I need to find I need to find a way out of it. So he finds two windows or four windows. Finds some windows. He's like, cool. Opens it up. He's like, oh shit, that's a vent hole. Slams it back shut. And here I come around, and I find him, and he's, hey, cap, go out the windows. Don't go out the windows. I'm like, that's a splendid idea, Gus. We should find out the windows. Shut up, get the things open. So I find I find mini blinds, and I rip the mini blinds down until I like break the things. And I start punching on this window. Bah, bah, bah. He goes, hey, Cap, man, just unlock it. And Red was like, oh, imagine that. <laughs> so he's still, he's still with it. I mean, he's able to, to function at this point because he still thinks I know what I'm doing. All right? I do not. I had lost the ability to, to operate my hands, to think clearly. Um, I, I couldn't have used some, some bailout system. I couldn't have tied a knot. Uh, I couldn't have, have, have tied a rope around a hallock and put it in the corner of the window and let myself out. I have to descend out of my pocket and hook into the rope. <laughs> I'm going out this damn window. I'm going out head first, and I'll deal with the ground when I get there. Which is odd because I'm afraid of heights. Like, bad. <laughs> and the fact that I'm ready to jump out of a window head first it, it really speaks to how, how, how dire the situation was. So I'm going out of the window head first. And, and Gus. Um, Goes to get out of this window, the air pack hits the top of the window frame. He's like, oh crap. You guys do air pack drills here? They teach you how to take the air pack off throughout the window, right? Gus, Gus learned that in rookie school. So, ooh, muscle memory, here it comes. Takes the air pack off, sets it outside the window, is able to look out and see a roof right under the window. Um, he's like, cool, cool. So he puts the air pack down, crawls out the window, and turns around and, and, and it waits for me. Now I see this happening. Now come here, Gus, and stand up next to me. There's a size difference <laughs> between the two of us, all right? He's, he's trim, <laughs> and I'm full figure, <laughs> all right? So I see him having problems getting through his window. Oh, crap, life sucks for me. i got to go through sideways or something. So I'm jumping into the window, my air pack's hitting the window frame. He's yelling, take your pack off. And I'm yelling, screw you, this freaking house is on fire. I'm taking my air pack off. Are you crazy? <clears throat> my rookie school. 14, 15 years ago, said, don't ever take the pack off. Loosen the straps, get the bottle down lower, creates a lower profile, and you go through the, the opening that you need to get through. So both of us go straight back to rookie school, which is the last time that either of us had ever done any solid air pack training. Okay? I did that in rookie school. I ain't doing that again. It was all day. We laid on our stomachs and played with our air pack. It sucked. <clears throat> I ain't do that again. I already know how to do that. So, so here I go to the window again. It's 24 inches wide, 24 inches tall, and, and this high off the ground. So it is, it is three inches above my dunlap. So I've got to jump up to get this over the edge in order to make you know, a successful escape. And that ain't happening. I'm running out of energy. I don't have the strength to jump into the window anymore. I'm jumping into the window, I'm falling back in the room. I'm jumping into the window, I'm falling back in the room. He's reaching in and grabbing me. I'm fighting. Um, I got to the point where if you would have walked up behind me and said, hey, yeah, the, uh, we put that fire out, um, and uh, we, we, had, we had this company that builds those playground slides come in, and they have this metal slide that you sit on, and as you go down it, there's like video game controllers you can play with, and candy, and there's a licorice machine at the bottom. I would not have gotten on that slide. I was so intent on, on going out of this damn window right now that you couldn't have walked up behind me and said, hey, Cap, come on, follow me. I'll lead you the way out. I'd have fought you. I whipped your ass because you were taking me away from my goal. I went out the window. I went out right now. That's all I could think about. And I don't even understand that Gus is still in front of me because I think that I'm going to the ground. When I, go, I never saw the roof. 
I never made the connection that Gus was floating in front of me. <laughs> I never even considered it. I still think I'm going to the ground, it's going to hurt. And here's Gus in front of me fighting. Come on, Cap, Jesus, hey. I'm tired of fighting with you. So I get to the point where I realize, you know what? That's it. I am, I am tired. I've tried to get out of the window. I don't fit. My air pack is hitting. The window's not big enough. I'm too fat. I don't have anything left. I've, I've given my best shot. And you know what? I'm going to take a knee. I'm going to lay down right here on the floor. And, and this is where I was standing when I made that decision. That I'm